Hi, I was tagged by LV Coffee Lover and Carolyn Gray today to do this handbag tag and it is the handbag deal breakers tag. So let's go. Okay, so basically the idea behind this tag is to list or state the items or things about a handbag that is just a complete deal breaker, you're never gonna love it, etc. So I kind of was surprised at how many things I jotted down. I ended up with 10 things on my list, so since that's kind of a lot to remember, I have to write them down. So I'll be looking down at my list uh, to tell you what they are, and they're in no particular order, but as my brain was just sort of going, okay, what do I hate, what do I hate? You know what I mean? I wrote these down, so let's start. Number one, I don't like accordion styles. Now, you know how the pochette matisse has those, you know, the, the, the divisions, but it's squared off. You know, there's like an actual section, but the bags are like a flat accordion and from the side, it just sort of looks like a file cabinet. I don't even know. Um, there's just no space in those different compartments to put things in my opinion, and I don't like the look of it and it bothers me. So I know that that's an absolute no go. I'll try to find pictures of the different things I'm talking about to kind of insert here somewhere so that you can sort of see what I'm talking about. But anyway, that is definitely something I will not ever go for, accordion. <laughs> All right, another thing is to have too much going on. Um, you know, like little things dangling, like pieces of leather dangling from the zipper pole that dangle this long, and then this giant chunky something something, and then you've got this other big thing that's a mirror hanging off of it, or you know what I mean, any of that stuff that's just too much, or some giant flower, or you know what I mean, I don't like anything with too much going on. I kind of tend to like plain and sedate, I guess, kind of looking bags for the most part. Number three, if it's difficult to get in and out of, I just cannot take it. Generally speaking, if it's a bag with a zipper on the top, I leave it unzipped. So I'm just, I kind of like a bag that's just open, but I do like having a zipper because I like being able to close it if I want to. Um, I worried about my pochette Matisse, uh, the way that, that little clasp closes on that. I thought that would be a pain, but it's easy. I really like it. I like the sound it makes when it snaps. But any bag that's difficult to get in and out of, you have to, okay, here's one thing for sure about a bag that I think is difficult to get in and out of. It's, it has that like piece of, it's like an open bag that has this piece of leather that kind of goes like over it and like it attaches to the other side. To me, once you undo it to try to get in your bag, that piece is always just like sticking there and it's always in the way and it's fussy and I hate that. It just drives me bananas. So if I see a bag that has that little piece, again, I'll try to find a photo to show you what I mean. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. Also on the difficult to get in and out of, um, one bag comes to mind was my Artsy. I thought that was the most beautiful bag in the world, but the way it came really close up to the armpit, you'd have to take it off your shoulder and like have it dangling here. And then you go in there and there were lots of different compartments, but it was, I don't know, the shape, it just, I couldn't get to anything unless I took it completely off my shoulder, set it down in front of me, if there was something to set it on, or balance it on my knee, you know, and try to dig. It just, I could not get to things I needed quickly and that bothered me. So that's another part of the difficult to get in and out of. Number four, a sticky zipper. No, absolutely, that's the end of it, no. The zipper has to be as smooth as silk and no issues, no fighting with it, or you know, where it gets stuck halfway, mm, no. Um, strange, but I hardly ever do zip a bag. But when I do zip it and that zipper is just smooth as silk, nothing gets me more than that. I absolutely love that. The sound, just that feel of a smooth zipper. Oh, I love it. Number five, if it's noisy, I don't want my bag to be making noises as I'm walking around with it. I don't want any kind of a dangly thing or a, um, like even a bag charm that's either attached to it or whatever to make a jingle, jingle, jingle. Like I'm, you know, like a cowbell or something and here she's coming. Um, I don't want that at all. And another one that I uh, bought and just put my things in and returned it, and this was a hundred years ago, but can't even remember the name. It was a brand that was going around, very popular at the time, but it was kind of a hobo-y, um, slouchy bag that was done in a patent leather. It just made this crinkly, crackety, crinkle, plasticky noise that just, it was like a very highly glazed patent leather. I, no, it just crinkled like crazy. And then you add any kind of a, something that jingle jangles and forget it, no, too loud, too loud, can't do it. <laughs> Number six is if it's too short to comfortably fit over my shoulder as a shoulder bag. There are some bags that have um, those rolled leather handles 
and I have to make sure that they're, because they're very, that's very uncomfortable if you have it like as a shoulder bag, especially if there's two of those handles together, that's very, not very comfortable, but it has to have enough space. If the bag then is thick underneath and you've got, you feel like you have to have your arms sticking out the whole time to get it to work, that's just not gonna happen. Um, I have a bag in particular that I'm thinking of that I think I would really love, but I don't think I could ever carry it on my shoulder, which the only other option would be hand carry or crook of the arm. Not sure I wanna do that. But um, yeah, so definitely if it's too short and you feel like it's con you're constantly like, you know, running your armpit into the bag, <laughs> the artsy again was kind of like that for me. I mean, there was space, but it definitely gave that feeling of the bag just right there. I just, I didn't care for that at all. Also, if it slips off the shoulder, if it's a shoulder bag that's constantly sliding down your arm and slipping off, that makes me a little nuts. I do happen to have a bag that does that and I absolutely love that bag not really to use very much because of that issue, but I'm still not wanting to part with it. Um, it's the Delightful PM, the original one. I love that bag, but it does completely slide off my arm all the time. I end up carrying it in the crook of my arm most of the time I ever carry it. But uh, so far I haven't decided to do anything about that and sell it, but that is something that from here on in, I check it out, if it starts to do that, back it goes. Not gonna happen, I just know it drives me bananas and then I won't reach for it. Okay, number eight, if the bag is too trendy, I tend to be quite the classics type of a girl and I do think long and hard before I grab a bag. It's gotta be something that I've had my eye on for a while or something to that effect and that I know I will still want to use or wear long into the future, especially if it's something like an Hermes or Chanel or any of the higher end leather um, LVs, that type of thing. I want to make sure I will be wearing the sucker and wanting to wear it when I'm, you know, in my later years. So I really stick to the classics and so forth when it comes to that. But if if anything, if it's a super trendy bag and it happens to have, you know, pearls stuck all over it, or I mean, that could be kind of classy depending on the bag, but do you know what I mean? If it has something that just sort of screams that decade and you kind of think a pearl is classic, it wouldn't. But wow, you go back in time and you think I'd never thought that would be not in style anymore, but it is. Do you know what I mean? It's things go in and out, especially if it was super popular during a certain year, even if it is sort of a classic style, it all will always scream that year. So I'm real careful about things that are a little too trendy and I, I kind of stay away from those. The very last one is color. If you've seen any of my other handbag videos, you know that I stick with black and like taupe colors and um, sometimes like an ox blood or maroon type of a color and pretty much not a lot else. Um, I stick to very, very plain colors. So if I were to jump into a color, it would be something like maybe this blue, um, maybe not quite this bright though, just something more sedate, like a coral, whatever, but nothing super bright. I just, I'm not gonna do that. I'm really not going to use it. I would use it maybe three times um, with specific outfits. And so I know that about myself. And so I just, I just don't even purchase them in that case, at least so far, so. That is it, color. It has to be the right color and a color that are a shade of the right color that I really love. It's for me to purchase it. So that's it. Those are my handbag deal breakers. And I want to thank Tiffany from LV Coffee Lover and Carolyn from Carolyn Gray today. Thank you so much for tagging me. This was fun and I really enjoyed watching your videos too. I will try to remember to link your, your videos down below so anyone watching this one can check those out too because they were very interesting also. Anyway, thank you so much. In the comments, leave me a comment on what your main handbag deal breakers are. That would be so fun for me to know and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.